point here and you can put it anywhere on the graph and it wants you to solve the solve the uh, solution for the system of equation. And as we learned yesterday, that's pretty much any time when you're looking at it from a graph point of view, when you see where the points or the lines intersect. But we're also hoping to see some of your um, explanations. And so we see Trinity said the solution because that's where the lines intersect, lines intersect, two lines intersect, two lines intersect. Okay. There is another way of thinking about it as well, and that both of these lines are equations. They're equations to lines. And so another way of thinking about it is that these lines intersect when the X and Y values are the same for each equation. And I haven't, I don't know if I've seen anyone state that one yet, but that is another way to think about it. And when we start looking at equations instead of graphs, it's important to keep that in mind. Okay, um, does anyone have any questions about this? Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the next couple of slides. And again, if you have any questions on any of these slides, please let myself or Mrs. Aldis know. Okay, so when looking at this third slide, or obviously there's a lot going on here. Um, but ultimately, what was that, Basson? I fixed it. You fixed it? Okay, awesome. Okay, so, so you wanna look at each graph and match up only one solution. There's only one solution for each of these graphs. Now there's a couple here that are a little trickier than the rest. Some of them seem a little more straightforward, the ones that have intersections. And there's this one, and then there's the other line that doesn't have an intersection, where it's just one single line on the graph. These two are the more tricky, tricky ones to determine. This one has, there's an answer that's correct, and there's another answer that's even better. So some of you I saw put, zero zero on this one this isn't incorrect that is a solution to this line but there is a better option so just something to keep in mind when you're matching each of these cards and what i would say about this one is you can you visualize this and you see one line another way to think about this is two lines on top of each other if you had two equations that were equivalent they would just be matched up because they'd be the same line and the same equation and so if that were the case, how many solutions would there be? Or what would the solution be in general? And so just something to think about on that particular card. Okay, yep, yeah. I'm seeing people in the chat, infinite, infinite. Definitely the right way to think about it. Okay. 
And I know some of you have finished. I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page here before we move on. Okay. Okay, uh, Bassam, um, you should probably look at the single line again, that the black colored graph that's passing through the origin. There is, there is a better answer. In fact, that's incorrect because there is a solution for that black colored graph. As well as the, um, the graph with the orange lines, the paralleled lines, should uh, rethink that one as well. Those two have to be looked at. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again for that third slide. And just to reiterate, essentially what we wanna do is we wanna do the exact same thing we did for the first slide, except we're doing it with multiple, multiple graphs and multiple points. And so with this first slide, we found out that the solution was the, at the point of intersection. Okay, so now this third slide's asking us to do the exact same thing. The only problem is that, and this isn't match up to that. Um, the only problem is that not all of these have intersections. And so that's creating probably some confusion for some of you. Um, but what you should be able to do is like, for, exa for example, this first blue one, we can see that the point of intersection is at negative four on the X axis and positive one on the Y. So we're gonna find negative four positive one right here. And this matches up with this one. And you'll do that for each of these. But again, this orange one and this black one here don't have intersections. So we touched on this yesterday, but these lines go on forever. And if they're parallel, they'll never intersect. So does this graph have a solution? You can write in the chat if you think it does or does not. Yep. 
Yep, that's right, Basong. I said no. And then this one, we're only seeing one line here. But this could also be, could either be one line or it could be two lines overlapping it on itself. And so if you have two equations that are equivalent, then any points on those lines, what, what do we think that means for the amount of solutions or the, what would the solution would be if you had two lines overlapped on top of each other? So they're equivalent. What would the solution be, do we think? Infinite. Why do we think it's infinite? What about the graph tells us that it might be infinite, just looking at it? Or if you have another way of thinking about it being infinite, what do we think? Yep. Yeah. So Alyssa, you said, yeah, because the lines are always touching, Basam, because the lines keep going on and on and on, making solutions. So every single point on that line going on and on and on and on and on forever, they're going to be points. They're going to be solutions to the intersection because they, essentially the intersection of every single point in that line, if there's two lines on top of each other, because they're the same lines. Yes, Jonathan, yep. So that's the best way to think about it. Yep, same equations, yep, exactly. So before we move on to this next slide, does anyone have any questions whatsoever about any of the three previous slides? It could be anything. I'll go over it really quickly or help you out. Okay, Jonathan. All right. If not, we're gonna go ahead. Oh, okay, cool. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and bring you all to the next screen, but I'm going to go ahead and pause it. And I want you to, we, we see on this screen here, we see solve by substitution and solve by elimination. These are the two terms that I showed you in the very beginning of class to think about. And so before we actually look at this, I want to go over, in fact, I'm going to stop share real quick and go back to my PowerPoint. Okay. So thinking again about substitution and elimination. So what is substitution? Uh, in fact, uh, can someone can write in the chat, what do we think substitution is before I specifically go over this? What do you think that means? And that could be just from a normal everyday common sense way or just a mathematical approach. Math. <laughs> a substitute number, Jonathan, okay, yep. That's definitely one way to think about it. Anybody else replace a value? Yep, replacing a value for a value we do not know. Yep, that's definitely do it. Like identity, the variable is a value. Yep. Okay. So thinking about all those things, oops, there we go. So uh, the mathematical definition is essentially when you replace a group of values or values um, with other equivalent groups of values. And you've done this a million times in your math lessons when you're uh, just simplifying a normal expression. You know, if you know that x equals five and you're given x plus two equals uh, x plus two, then x plus two equals five plus two because you're plugging in five for x because you know they're equivalent. So you're substituting x with five. So x plus two equals five plus two equals seven. And this is something that you've all learned over the years. And this is the basic idea of what substitution is. And going in this next uh, Desmo slide, we're gonna talk about how it's, it's the same concept, just a little bit more advanced. Now, similarly, what do we think elimination is? To get rid of, so Selma, you already said, yep, to get rid of something. Anybody else have any thoughts on elimination?
to get rid of a value, Jonathan? Yep. Okay, so if we go over elimination, the mathematical definition is removing any a term from an expression or equation by using addition or subtraction. So you've done this thousands of times when you're you know simplifying expressions just as we did with substitution. But with elimination, if you had an expression or an equation, excuse me, that says 6s plus 5 equals 17, you would minus 5 from both sides. The first thing we want to do is we want to get x by itself to solve for x. So to get x by itself, the first thing we do is we minus 5 from both sides. And what did that do? That eliminated the five from that side of the equation. You eliminated it. So this is a form of elimination that you've all done multiple times. And then from this point, if you wanted to solve for x, you could divide by six from both sides, get x by itself, and then you find the value for x. But this first step, this is elimination. Now, taking both of these concepts, you actually were introduced to it in yesterday's Desmos activity on slide 10. There were some of you that had questions about it. Some of you were able to complete it. So you might've used substitution and elimination without even realizing it. But, yep, Jesus process of yep, elimination. So this was slide 10 from yesterday. And essentially we had two hangers that were, try you're trying to balance both of them. And so how do we go about doing this? And so we wanna look at, this is the hanger. Now, what we want to realize is that in order to balance both of them, we have to make sure that this equals this, this, this whole side of the hanger, because you have this first hanger that's most important. And so we know that this whole side has to equal this whole side. But, and so if, if, so if we draw out or write out what this whole side was, we had x plus x plus x plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, which is written here. You also had x plus x and y plus y plus y plus y, and they're equivalent because they have to balance. And so we have it written here, all that equals all the left side of the hanger equals the right side of the hanger. And if you combine like terms and simplify it a bit, we get this, 3x, because you combine the x's, combine the threes to get nine, equals 2x plus 4y. But the only problem is that we have a second hanger. And so this also has to equal this side. So we have 2x equals 4y, the equivalent of x plus x and y plus y plus y plus y. So now, and we can see here the red just to clearly distinguish which side of the hanger is which. And we can simplify these to clean them up a little bit. So we can, uh, again, use a little bit of elimination to get uh, all the x's to combine like terms. And we have x plus 9 equals 4y. And then we can simplify this a bit and we get x equals 2y. Now, at the end of the day, we know that we want x's and y values for both equations to be the same. That's the only way both the hangers will be equivalent. Whenever you have two equations like this, this is a system of equation. This is two equations where we know the x's and the y's have to be the same. It's the same thing you saw on the graphs. It's just, instead of showing it with a graph, it's showing this with equations. And so that, so whenever you see those two equations, think system of equations, when you know that the X and Y has to be the same. And so when you're thinking about substitution, and again, uh, so we know from simplifying earlier that X equals two Y. So instead of, you don't know what X is specifically, you don't know a specific number, but you know what equals two Y. So instead of having X equals five or X equals seven or X equals 10, you know X equals two Y. So instead of plugging a number, you can plug in 2y for x. And so if you do that, you get 2y plus 9 equals 4y. Now that the x is gone, you can solve for y. And so if you do your normal uh, combining like terms, you minus 2y from both sides, you get 9 equals 2y. And then the last step to get 2y two, uh, two by itself is to divide by 2. So we're going to go ahead and divide by 2. And then y equals 4.5. Now we have y. And now we don't care which side we plug this into because it's all gonna be the same anyways. But this one's probably the easiest, right? Because it's the smallest. So let's go ahead and plug in y to this equation. And if we plug in y to this equation, 
we'll get y equals 4.5. And then simplify. So 2 times 4.5 equals 9. So x equals 9. And this is, and this would be the two points that would solve the linear systems of equation, and it would also balance this hanger. And so elimination is very similar, except when we're at this point where we have these two equations, instead of substituting x for 2y, we're instead just going to either add or subtract this entire equation from this equation. Because x and 2y are equivalent, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So because x equals 2y, if you minus an x from one side, it's the same thing as minusing a 2y from one side, from the other side, because they're both equivalent. And so we would from it, so if you minus x from the left, you get 9. And this eliminates the x. Because look, x, x was on both sides. So if you, might, if you have x on this one and you minus x from it, you've eliminated that x. And now we only have y terms. And now we can just solve for y. And if we follow the same steps, simplify, divide by 2 from both sides, y equals 4.5. Again, the same value we had in the last one. Plug in the y, simplify, and we get 9 and 4.5 again. So this is, it's okay if you didn't follow along perfectly. I just wanted to give you a quick little, you know, quick little show of what this looks like. And so thinking, having that in mind about what elimination and substitution are, um, you can go ahead and I'm going to unfreeze the Desmos activity and see if you can guess or determine what method you think would be best to solve each of these equations or each of these systems of equations, because there's two equations for each one. And I will give you, well, I'll let you, I'll let you work on it for a bit and then I'll say some more. As a side note, anything that I was explaining, I'm sure there are questions, uh, but does anyone have any questions about that? Or on that particular slide that you're on right now? I probably, it probably was a lot. I just wanted to briefly show what elimination and substitution was. So then you have at least a decent idea of maybe, okay, hey, which one would I pick on this slide? It's okay if you don't fully understand it yet. Mr. Kraft? Uh, yes, Ms. Uh, do you only need to put one card in the card sorts? Um, like no, one card each? No, you can do both. You could put all four of them on one side. Um, and I was actually going to mention this right now. So any of these methods, they would all work for any of these. Um, you could technically solve the systems of equations for either of these methods with substitution or elimination for any of those. It's it's more asking what you think would be easier. What do you think would be best? What me which method do you think would be best? But yeah, so yeah, so it, it, it would be more than one. All of the equa uh, all of these systems of equations, those two sets of equations should be matched up with with at least uh, one of those. One of those By the methods. way, I did something wrong in one of these slides. Can you open one of them? Yeah, which side was it? Uh, I think it was uh, the like draw a line that will make one 
and minus three. Is it the first slide? Hold on. Mm, no. Second slide. Second slide, okay. Okay, so it's it was just your point of intersection. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. I, um, I think if you hit the red X, it should let you erase it. And then, um, yeah, it was just that point because your point of intersection is on the wrong point. Or the solution to the systems of equation is the wrong the wrong one. Can you open it for me? I want to resolve it. You want me to open it up, you said? The second slide, I want to resolve it. I did it wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, oh, gotcha. Okay. Because it's locked. I forgot about that. Whoops. Sorry, I'm probably pulling a lot of you out from where you were at. Um, if you think on slide four, you've already matched up with the ones you think you would use, I'm going to go ahead and open up the fifth slide. And just it's going to give you an opportunity to, to describe or explain why you think you chose that method. And then once you've had an opportunity to um, explain why you chose what you chose, the last slide, I just opened it up. Um, don't, you know, don't worry if you can't solve them. It just, you know, it's going to give you an opportunity to go ahead and try and solve them if you can by using either elimination or substitution. Really quickly, I thought I'd share some of the answers 
that all of you are coming up with for your explanations. And uh, it seems like a lot of you prefer elimination. And if I'm being honest, I don't know which one I actually like better. I think it probably depends what mood I'm in, how I'm feeling. Uh, and I think it was Sunia. Yep, yeah, you mentioned how if it's y equals, then we'll probably do elimination. And if it's x plus y, then substitution. That's a great way of thinking about it as well. Oh, we do have a substitution. Trinity, yep, OK. Got a win for substitution. And there might have been one or two others that liked substitution better. But moral of the story is it, it it's totally up to you as far as which method might be better. But depending on the equation that you're given or the sets of equations, one might be a bit quicker or easier. Does anyone have any questions on any of the slides right now? I know we were all trying uh, slide six. Is anyone stumped on that or are the people are doing okay?
And uh, Charles and Jesus, you doing okay in the slide you're on? Nice, Alyssa and Lily, you both finished that last slide in Virginia. Oh, and Anthony. Done. Yep. Nice song. <laughs> 